On June 14th, 1940, the Nazis entered Paris. The occupation would be an era of humiliation, deprivation, and danger for millions. Among them, the world's most famous artist, Pablo Picasso. He was the creator of Cubism, the master of modern art, the sort of painter condemned by the Nazis as degenerate. And he was known for his anti-fascist sentiments during the Spanish Civil War. He could have fled before the invasion, but he chose to stay. Was it courage or convenience? He said that it was partly a matter of not wanting to be told what to do by anyone uh, in terms of the, the Germans forcing him out of France, but I suspect that Part of it also had to do with just the simple logistics of Picasso's life, because he was surrounded, you understand, with a whole entourage of people, his former mistress and daughter, her mother, his current mistress, his wife, uh, all, of, all of his works of art. Basically, that's right. Curator Stephen Nash has assembled an unprecedented collection of Picasso's war works from all over the world. It's been a neglected era in the master's career, a body of work created in the crucible of Nazi oppression, work that often tells us as much about the artist as it does about the occupation. War usually defeats art. In traditional historical terms, there are very few artists that were able to somehow come to grips with these horrendous subjects. Picasso, that probably is genius. He didn't even try. I mean, he paints history without doing it in traditional history painting terms. He doesn't deal with the subjects directly. He doesn't paint battles, and yet it's, it's there. It, it is so strongly a part of the art uh, that you can't miss it. The Nazis chose to give him a rather wide berth. They would search his studio. He was harassed. Uh, he was under surveillance. But nevertheless, he was allowed to survive, and partly because of the fact that um, he was so famous. So what do you think war did to Picasso's work? You know, inst instead of blunting it, as it might have happened, and discouraging it, and him going totally underground, he was as prolific as ever. And he painted and drew and made sculptures throughout the war period. And it was just, I think, for him, a, a natural necessity to keep working, because this was his way of dealing with reality. But also, it was not his style to, to paint very uh, explicit bombastic scenes of the war and so it, it does come through in in subtle ways you have these bodies that are however racked and tortured and twisted humor sometimes comes in also mm -hmm. you know Picasso it wasn't all about depression he, he had a very strong love affair going on at this time with the, the current woman in his life. She must have been quite a woman <laughs> yeah. in that picture. <laughs> well, she was usually identified with long red fingernails and with her red lipstick. But this is 1942. This is right, right in, the, in middle the middle of the occupation. And yes. yet, obviously, he still has a life. He does. He was surrounded with friends. He had a love affair going on. I mean, it wasn't all grim and depression. I mean, uh -huh. there were, he would get together in cafes and um, life under the occupation. And in Paris, you made the best out of it you could. But by and large, it was still a pretty tough, grim period. Witness this work. Witness this. I mean, this really becomes quite monstrous in a sense. Picasso had this dog, uh, which was an Afghan hound called Kazbek, which he also painted and drew a lot with this long, long snout. And he takes the snout of that dog and he implants it on the face of some of these women. What do you draw about what life was like from these paintings? It was grim, it was tough, it was under the, the boot of Nazi occupation. But the it paintings. wasn't death. I mean, there was a lot of death, but he, he continued to live. We see food, we see women, even in these tortured contexts. Right, but you see also s skulls. Uh, you see in a painting such as the Great Charnel House from the Museum of Modern Art, this, this really is about war at, at its grimmest. This was done right at the end of the war when news of the concentration camps uh, in Germany was getting back to Paris. It's not specific, it's not a, an event, but it is about the loss of life and about concentration camps and about victims of war and all war. You know. I look at this work and I wonder why you wanted to do this exhibit. <laughs> well, partly because it had never been done. 
These are not uh, happy visions by any means, obviously, but they're very strong, strong paintings, and I think among the greatest of Picasso's whole career. Do you really? Yes, I do. It would be easy to see this exhibition as a depressing collection of images, but that would be an oversimplification, and Picasso was rarely simple. There is horror, but there is also hope. There is pain, but also perseverance. And most of all, there is a tremendous sense of strength. In ordinary images, he proclaims endurance, strength. You get a man with a lamb, the first steps of a child, or a vivid symbol of freedom proclaimed. 